Mr. Rude, I rather have it. Mr. Rude is rude. He is very rude. He is very, very rude. He is worse than very, very rude. He is extraordinarily rude. When you meet somebody, you might think to yourself that that, that person has a large nose. But you wouldn't say anything to them, would you? Because that would be rude, wouldn't it? Rather Mr. Rude would just blurt it out. Big nose! But he wouldn't stop there. Oh no, not Mr. Rude. Big nose! With a nose like that, you can vacuum the floor. Can you imagine saying that to someone? Well, I hope you can't. And he was the same with everyone. If if he met someone overweight, he would shout, Vacky, you're supposed to take food out of the fridge, not eat the fridge as well. When he was driving along in his car, he would yell rude things at the people he passed by. Mr. Rude was a horrible man. He didn't have a nice thing to say to anyone. And not surprisingly, no one liked him. One day, Mr. Rude Miss Little Miss Tiny were not so mad as nearly threatened her. Good morning, said Little Miss Tiny. Look at the size of you, exclaimed Mr. Rude. Squat, you're so tiny I can squash you under my son. Four Little Miss Tiny burst into tears and ran home. Behind the tree and the other side of the lane, Mr. Happy looked anything but happy. Yeah, he had heard everything. The next morning, Mr. Happy was outside Mr. Rude's house. Suitcase in hand. Mr. Happy knocked on Mr. Rude's front door. Go away, yelled Mr. Rude. Mr. Happy knocked again. Mr. Rude opened the door. Can you read? said Mr. Rude, pointing to his doormat. Mr. Rude's doormat did not say welcome like everyone else's doormat. Mr. Rude has crossed out welcome and then in large bright letters have written go away underneath. Mr. Happy smiled, barged past Mr. Rude and went into the living room. Get out! shouted Mr. Rude. Mr. Happy smiled an even larger smile and sat down in the armchair. Mr. Rude exploded. He ranted and raged for half an hour. Mr. Happy calmly sat through it all, smiling. Eventually, Mr. Rude went into the kitchen to make himself supper, without offering any to Mr. Happy. After his supper, Mr. Rude ranted and raged for a full hour. But whatever Mr. Rude called him, Mr. Happy took no notice. Finally, Mr. Rude turned out the lights and went upstairs without offering Mr. Happy a bed for a night. When he came down in the morning, Mr. Happy was there, 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 smiling. Okay, I give in, said Mr. Wood. What do you want? Breakfast would be nice, said Mr. Happy. Please, Mr. Wood makes breakfast for him. It was the first time in Mr. Wood's life that he had ever done anything to someone else. In fact, that was the first time he ever asked somebody, anybody what they wanted. Thank you, said Mr. Happy, when he finished. Right, you can go now, demanded Mr. Rude. But Mr. Happy did not budge. Mr. Rude ranted and raved and raved and ranted. But he en ended up making lunch for Mr. Happy and supper. He even offered Mr. Happy a bed the night. Mr. Happy stayed for the fourth night. Slowly, the renting and raising became less and less. Mr. Ruth discovered he had something that he had never known he possessed. Manners. When it was time for Mr. Happy to leave, he shook Mr. Rude's hand and said, Thank you so much, Mr. Rude. I really enjoyed my stay. Mr. Rude, in the smile that 
a spare every bit as white as Mr. Lapis and found himself saying, and so did I. Mr. Root was a changed man. Burp, buzzed Mr. Root. Where? Almost. He ended.